Hi everyone, this is Damien Levy and welcome in this weekly swing trading and day trading analysis using smart money concept and support and resistance. So we are on odd USD and nothing really changed since last week. I just placed the Forex power here, so you get it for, for a reference. This was explained in the Forex professional course live lesson of last Saturday. And it helps you to, to choose which pair you will take if there is some correlated pairs uh, arriving at the same level. So let's look at odd USD. Might be a long lesson because I didn't prepare. So, so this is a volume at price on the weekly. On the weekly, we have a nice impulsive move from here to here, taking out this low and closing below. So this is a chain in trend. So the weekly trend is down right now. Price rejected this valley on the remote price. And now it's, there is multiple valley here, but they are a bit minor. There is this major valley right here that, that interests me. And that's where I would like to take a trade. So this will be the first level. And the second level is above here after those double top. So there is like liquidity here. So price might, make a minor rejection here, change the, a minor rejection here, and then go all the way here and take the liquidity here, maybe touch the 200 EMA. And I, after that, I would expect it to fall uh, drastically. So this level makes a lot of sense. And on the buy side, we have a nice impressive move going up here, taking out the previous high, which was here on the weekly. And we have eventually from supply and demand, smart money concept and inefficiency here, but this has been taken out a little bit. We have the top of this candle right here. And the first valley after that is here. That's where I would like to buy eventually. It might be a good buy here because this candle is a candle that created the impressive move going up and there is an efficiency here. So it's a it's high probability self um, setup for a buy here. And this zone, this valley has more probability of success because there is more loss in volume just in this zone right here. So two buy opportunity, one eventually minor here and major buy here eventually. Inside this candle, we initiated this big move going up. So that's it for odd USD. I will go left to see if there is some inefficiency in terms of supply and demand at the the level that I just placed. So the level that I placed for a sell right here has like a double top. So there is liquidity right there for sure. Nice liquidity, double top. So if price would go above that and take the liquidity, there is a nice chance for it to drop. Uh, but on supply and demand, there is no fair value gap or inefficiency here. So this level seems a bit lower probability and uh, there is no inefficiency in this whole move here. But if we look, Above it, right there, there is an inefficiency here from here to here. So the second zone, and there is as well a round number, a big round number here. So this zone will be very high probability for a sell for sure, because price left this candlestick, and before there is nothing coming back except this candlestick. So there is a fair value gap in the middle right here. Additional confirmation. Odd cat. So the weekly trend on AltCAD was up here and then it went down and closed below. So the trend is down. We are around the EMA, 50 and 20 EMA on the weekly. And then there is a nice huge level of resistance here several times with a lot of spikes and everything. And if we look at the forward chart, what do we get there? In terms of retracement of this impressive downward move, let's see where we are. And we are above 50%. In terms of inefficiency, there is a nice inefficiency here with this zone right here. So this one is high probability for a sell for sure. And it's the top of the impressive downward move on the downtrend on the weekly. Uh, this one, we might eventually see, it didn't touch the 800 EMA on the four chart. And this zone is still, actually the zone is, the top of the move is here. So maybe if I see a, a takeout of the liquidity here and a pattern for a sell, I might sell again here. 
this zone of demand has worked and now price is rejecting so it will come back there likely but if it takes the liquidity and then as a nice rejection down i might take this one for a sell still on the daily we're still in a downtrend same as with the weekly actually and this zone is a huge zone of support and resistance. You see multiple rejection, multiple rejection on the daily, as the weekly is the same. So yeah, this zone might work a little bit more next week. So I let it there. Odd CHF. So we were, and we are still in a downtrend, but now there was a, a nice range and it falls down. And the level is quite significant let's see wait we will touch the level the candle that made the low here and on the yearly chart this is a pin bar going up so a strong strong pin bar so the weekly candle made the low right here the top of the candle is here so this zone might see some nice rejection let's check on the daily what we have there on the daily <clears throat> we have uh, we have like a rally base rally so this is supply and demand zone the candle made the low is just below that so price might first the first level reach this daily candle right here and eventually go up why is that because between this high and this low there is an inefficiency as well so this confirms the zone in the middle just below that so i will be ready for a buy a little bit below than the first level halfway so i might put it there in case it would be better. And since we have a range here, this could be a range and then a fake out down, and then it might retrace very violently all the way up and after continue to go up. This is also a, a nice probability for this one. So daily level, I'm not sure I can still, yeah, I can still keep them because on the weekly, we have a nice impressive move going down, okay? And this is a supply and demand, a supply zone from the weekly here. So those levels still apply, and it's an untouched zone. There is some multiple high, so liquidity above those high on the daily. So for a sell, this is still valid here. Yeah. But New Zealand, so there was a winning trade here last week, and now the level is higher. So we can see a beautiful impressive move going up, but the overall trend is still down. Yeah, the last move is quite impressive going down. So price went all the way to this order block right here with inefficiency just below it. And it worked. It worked so far. There's a nice inefficiency. So this is quite nice. And after that, there will be another zone on the top right here. Check on the daily. So this is a daily order block supply right here. And there is another one right there with a big round number up to it so the daily is a bit stronger going down so weekly had an impressive move going down and there is an untapped zone right here around the round number which broke this low so there is some nice chance that this high worked actually this one here yeah. and there is a beautiful valley on the volume at price around this round number right there exactly here this is a good valley, and it's significant valley. Price really drops a lot there. So, so yeah, I'm okay to sell on this level. Impressive move on the weekly. We are around the candle who made the high bottom on the daily. So this zone makes sense. I would check for any efficiency eventually on the four chart. There is an order block just above that, see here. So yeah, this would make sense. I would engulf this whole zone right here. Actually, the order block is this one. So we are inside the order block that was untouched here. And there was a huge daily rejection right here. This happened on Friday. I don't take much trade on Friday. And uh, also for your information, last week, uh, we made 4.5%, but the trade we're using only 0.25% as a risk size so it's pretty good profit with very minimal even actually no drawdown during the week so it looks pretty good so what i mean by that is 
maybe on Monday we can see eventually a fake out of this high, but we are still in the zone. So I would still be interested for a sell here, the beginning of the week, because this other block right here took the liquidity of this high, this high, and this high. So this one make, makes sense. And there was a huge move going down there. So following the weekly now, nice interesting move going down. This level still makes sense. And I will wait on the 15 minute to see another forming, or I will see what happened on Monday. Because actually it happened. There was a change in trend on Friday. See, that second row made the high. I have some indicators that I found to use to help eventually. This one show you the order block and you have to select only the 15 minute chart to take your entry. So you see, there was a fake here. Uh, it could have been a winning trade because your stop loss should have been a little bit above. So this one might have been a winning trade for some of you. And then there is this low making this new high all the way there and then broke this low. So actually there is a signal right now because this move is very impressive going down. There is a signal right now to enter for a sell. So what I might do on Monday, if it come back there, I will eventually go to the five minute chart and check for a nice change of character. And then I might enter the trade for a sell. And since it will be Monday likely, uh, maybe I will just take 0.25% of the account. So here we go. Now on the daily side, I need to update. We have a beautiful impressive move from here all the way here. There is another block here and another other block just there. And this other block makes sense on the daily. So let's check about the volume at price if there is a level in the middle. It's from the weekly. The weekly level from the volume at price are always more reliable for you to know. So let's zoom out a little bit. So we set a level of support in this range right here. And we have eventually one here and one here significant. So I will update my lines and place my level there. So this one is significant. Makes sense. I place my level there. And then the second one will be just a little below. Yes. Those levels are very, very powerful. And around the bottom of the move, there is eventually a huge level of support and resistance right here. Below, not really interested. Let's clean the chart. So we are interested eventually in those buy right there, those three. They have good probability of success, all of them. And then as a sell, we have this huge valley right here. And where the price is at now is a huge um, spike and there is a valley just before. So this level makes sense for a sell as well. A good retracement can happen there. See, and it's very interesting because there is another block right there with a huge departure from it. So I will extend a little bit this zone to the candlestick who took the liquidity, which is this one. So now just a little bit above here. This will be the zone for a buy, the first zone for a buy, and after there is a second one here. Okay, now let's look at this one. And it's interesting because there is multiple bottom here, which means there is liquidity below that. So we might have a fake of this zone going to the next. And this, there was liquidity here. This order block took the liquidity and then impressed up. So this one would be better actually with inefficiency just below. So maybe the first zone is not so much high probability, even if it looks so. Yeah, so I will remove this zone to filter out. We want to get only the best level and there is inefficiency here. So you want, this will be a better zone for buying. Here we go. Not here. Too many bottom at the same place. The liquidity might be swiped out very easily then. Okay, odd yen. So odd yen, we have a, a beautiful, strong, impressive move going down the weekly. The monthly is still an uptrend with this huge move there. But the order blocks that might go to is here. So there is still room to fall on the downside as a retracement zone. See, this is an impulse, very strong, and this is a channel descending quite quick. So this is a retracement. But we are seeing the retracement. There is a nice impulsive on the weekly. It's an untapped zone right there in the middle inefficiency. 
So this one make a lot of sense. Uh, let's check the volume price. So price is inside the biggest valley, as you can see. This is the biggest valley with the round number right here. So we have the possibility that the price will just fall from there. And above that, there is another valley. That's where it rejected touch with a spike and rejected last week. So I'm still interested to sell this level. I doubt that the price will go further up. And for a buy, actually, I'm not sure I want to buy there. Let me check. Well, there is a very, very huge spike and valley just after in time of volume in this zone. And it's a daily, very strong and impressive going up. So yeah, okay, I will, I will still take this one as a daily trade, expecting not so much pips out of it. Yeah, this would, this would make sense for sure. So as you saw on the volume at price, there is a huge valley here around this round number and price rejected it. And this is another block on the one hour chart. I would be, there is an inefficiency above this other block until here. And after there is no inefficiency in this zone, which makes me believe that the price will retrace to eventually this other block right here. And since we have a very strong impressive move going down there, it's a four hour chart order block as well. I will lower my level and this makes sense for a sell here, right there. So I would be, yeah, very interested to sell around here because the trend has changed on the four hour and on the daily as well, I guess. Yes, on the daily, we have another block taken out. Uh, we have the 200 image just above. So two things can happen. It can reject this other block because there is no inefficiency above it. Yeah, I think that can happen, but it can also go all the way to trigger the 200 DMA on the daily, which is the 800 DMA here. So it might even be take the high one more time, take the 200 DMA and then fall more from there. But still the sell looks higher probability for me. And on the daily, um, there is an inefficiency here, like an order block, lower time frame, and price didn't came back. It's very near last week, but it's not yet. And around the four hour chart, what we got? So we got this candle taken out by the spike. So the inefficiency here is basically gone. Yeah, no, nothing important. So top. Yeah, I would still be interested in this other block for buy. So there is a little bit inefficiency here between those bottom and this top. There is a little gap between it. So this will be a bit lower probability for a buy, but the daily is quite strong going up and it looks like a strong, um, yeah, the trend looks clean. So yeah, that's it. Euro odd. So Euro odd, we have a minor change in trend happening here, breaking this low. And then we have like a liquidity get up and other stop loss taken out and get up. And now the trend is still is going up on the forward chart. We have a daily nice impressive move from here to here. We have some inefficiency from here to here and a nice level here. So let's check. On the weekly chart, we have a, a beautiful level of resistance here combined as a support. So this level in the middle with the 800 EMA make a lot of sense. How does it appear? See on the volume at price? I'm talking about this huge valley. This is a high probability success for, for a buy. And the second one will be here, the, the second zone right here, not the level just above. And this will follow eventually the weekly impulse going up. It's an untap. There is a lot of liquidity created there. And we have a huge valley here, which makes me think the price might reject more. And if it doesn't, there is another valley just above right here. And on the forward chart, we have another block here with an inefficiency just below. So a double top, which means stop losses below that, be above that, which makes me believe that this zone might work as a sell. Let's zoom on the one hour chart to see about the buy. The buy basically is the spike of this one hour order block. So the top of the order block has been taken out, but not this spike. And below that, there is an inefficiency between here and here. So yeah, this level still makes sense. So I will keep it there. GBP odd. So we have a multiple triple bottom here. So a lot of liquidity below that. And there was an inefficiency zone right here. And there is a one hour 
other block here, with, which makes the impressive move going all the way to this new high. And on the upside, there is eventually like a triple top, a head and shoulder here. So a lot of stop losses above that. And there is another block just above. So I will not take this other block for a sell, but a buy below those triple bottom seems pretty nice. Now on the daily, we have a beautiful impressive move going up. We can see that here. So the buy is basically the safest thing to do here. On the weekly, which correlates with the monthly, we are on a downtrend from here to here. And the top, the candle made the top begin here, and there is 800 EMA on the weekly here. So this zone is very nice for a sell. I might wait eventually for a one hour or four hour change of character, not the 15 minutes, but this zone make a lot of sense. And it's correlated with multiple resistance here as well on the weekly. So yeah, the buy still makes more sense. And also on the Forex power, we can see that GBP is very strong compared to the Australian dollar. So a buy on this currency pair is very high probability. CAD yen. There were some losses here last week and a beautiful win actually, like one loss at the beginning and after a beautiful win with a huge amount of pips, here we are. So why is this level uh, worked but faked? Well, the weekly is down. It was an impressive move. We are inside the order block from the weekly. So I would expect this. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is the order block from the weekly where the price rejected. And we can eventually expect the price to go all the way to this beginning of the candle right here. So the, for me, I would be more tempted to, to sell. The weekly candle is quite huge going up there. So let's check about volume at price level on the buy side. Okay, so we have two huge valley. The first here, a huge drop in price, which means this will be a good support. And then there is a huge valley just below it. So those two levels still make sense. And after that, there is eventually the candle body who made the bottom, which is in this huge valley right here. And it didn't um, spike out the high, so the trend might still continue to go down at least up to eventually this level, this zone. So let's look at the forward chart. So on the forward chart, we have no inefficiency here. We have a double bottom and now it will be a triple bottom. And um, another block here that has been taken out last week. And there is inefficiency below from this low to this high right here. So this one would make sense for a buy. The first one, not so much. And on the daily, so it's a beautiful daily uptrend. There is inefficiency between this and this right there. So for sure, a buy around the candle made the low, which is this one, would make sense. And this candlestick right here took the liquidity of this one and this one. So it's quite strong. We might see a nice rejection here, for sure. Not for sure. <laughs> Always probability. Now, if we look on the upside, since the weekly trend downside hasn't been broken up, what would eventually be an opportunity for a sell? Well, there is this order block right here with inefficiency below. So there is eventually a possibility to sell here. So I am not sure, but this one right here makes sense. And there is an order block actually right here before the move go down and inefficiency in this move. There is no, no move here, no move here. But actually here, there is no inefficiency. So the only inefficiency you can see is actually right there, which mean uh, the candlestick took the high is this one. So this is the other block right there that I will be interested to sell. Why is that? Because the trend is changed from uptrend to downtrend. So here we go. CAD CHF. Nothing really changed because it didn't retrace to the right level. It followed the daily trend and now breaks the low. So what do we get here? We get a nice impressive move going down. This is a beautiful impressive move going down. And we have a nice level of support around here. This is a fake out of the zone. This is a real level of support and same rejected multiple time. 
So what is the volume of price telling us? It's a zone where there is no information so much here. So we are a bit on our own. Well, we can see there is a valley because there is no liquidity. It's the first time price go below this level. So we will just use supply and demand from daily and for hour to make a level here. So the candlestick who took the liquidity before the move down is this one. So aside of having a level all the way down here, I would prefer to have a level here from the daily. And now we look at the forward chart and see what happened there. There is no fair value gap. Everything is taken out. There is a little gap here eventually. Then what about here? No, nothing. There is a gap here as well eventually. But this is not very, very nice. So I would eventually place a level here because there is an inefficiency between here and here in this zone. But it wouldn't be a, a very high probability level. It will respect the daily candle, this one, was against the trend before going down. And it respects this line chart daily, this spike as well. Oh, and it respects this spike as well on the daily, right there. So actually it respects the level of support and resistance from the line chart and the spike as a resistance last time it was there. So oh yeah, this level makes sense. The one above it, not so much. So yeah, I would be tempted to sell because there is a beautiful impulsive move going down there on the daily. And on the weekly, we can see a zone of supply, you know, a drop, base drop. So, okay. CHF yen. So this one is in a huge uptrend. The closest level of support is basically there. Uh, there is a nice level of resistance here. We place it here. There is, it's a huge zone of resistance here with high liquidity. Let me check the volume and price. So on the day, we have a nice valley here. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Now let's look on the forward chart. So this zone has been taken out, actually. I will not go into detail, but you know this liquidity is gone. This one takes the liquidity over here. It's gone. This one takes the liquidity. It's gone as well. This zone has been spiked there. This zone has been spiked as well. The only zone that is clean actually is the zone below that, this one. So this level, no, it doesn't make sense. We are around a huge round number. So I would still imagine the price falling down, but to buy, I would expect a nice retracement at least to this zone, which is, an, there is a, a nice gap here. So price might want to fill this gap and that's where you want to buy only, only there. And yeah, here we go, that's it. Gold, gold, we have a nice double top right here. And we have a change in trend happening last week between this low, making this high, breaking and closing below. So now that we have liquidity here, I would see the price going all the way up here to this other block, down right there, and then fall. So this doesn't really change. On the daily, we can see the trend, the trend has been spiked, you know, the trend was up until here and then it has been spiked here, but price didn't close yet below that. And before that, there is no inefficient forward chart actually. So on the forward chart, there is more inefficiency. The inefficiency here hasn't been taken out. So there is a zone here actually for a buy. And we can see there is eventually a double bottom here as well. So liquidity. So let's try to play this level and see if we have a nice support and resistance sitting there. Let's go on the weekly. Nothing much on the weekly. Best level is still the level below that. Okay, on the daily, we have a nice drop in volume. But since there is not so much history, but this still qualifies as a nice valley. It was a good level for resistance here. And below that, there is a huge valley on the daily, which is very ins inspiring for a buy, for sure. So those two levels qualify, for sure. And actually, they are not very high probability because there is like one bottom and like three. It's a triple bottom here. So there is a lot of liquidity below that. And price might spike it pretty nicely. And there is liquidity all the way there. So this zone, actually, the second zone would make more sense because there is some kind of a, not a real gap, but 
a little bit of a gap here on a higher time frame, let's say. So it would make more sense to buy here. And there is a real gap just below that right there. So the real gap is actually from here all the way to there. And those two zones are a bit lower probability there. This one has a, has a gap here that has been quite filled yet. And there is a 200 year night. So even if there is liquidity below, we might see a short term rejection there. I still maintain it, still qualify quite. Silver, so this zone has been taken out already. The daily is still up on silver. We have an order block for a sell here with an inefficiency below. So this would qualify quite nicely. And the level was the strong level of resistance right here. And the monthly is quite down, but it's a retracement from this zone right here. Well, the sure option here seems to be the buy because there is a huge impressive move going up, taking out this new high. Okay, so this one makes total sense for a buy. The sell, we don't have so much for a sell, so let's leave the sell where it is so far. And let's focus on the buy. The buy, we have a beautiful order block right here on the daily and untouched zone. There is a gap there. So I will move on the four hour chart to check. Yeah, the four hour chart has also a very beautiful inefficiency between here and here. And now we have like some kind of a double bottom right there. So I will place that on the chart because visually it's a nice reference which means liquidity below that. So this zone uh, actually is a perfect zone for a buy. With the round number in the middle, as you can see, it's exactly there. And then there is a 200 EMA on the forward chart. It will be the first time it will touch the 200 EMA on the forward chart for a long, long time. Actually, it hasn't been touched since it was crossed. So this would make a lot of sense for a buy here. I hope it will go there because this zone is, is nearly a perfect zone. Inefficiency, a nice um, demand zone right there, plus a volume at price level because this was placed last week. So save a bit of time. Don't go over it again. Here we go. Euro USD. Let me simplify the chart. It's a bit messy. So we get some kind of a channel here. A lot of stuff plus below that. On the weekly side, we have the 200 EMA and we have a monthly downtrend pretty nicely. But, so it might touch the 200 EMA, which is just above. But on the monthly, on the monthly, there is a 50 EMA and it's a bit above that. So yeah, I would expect the price to go a little bit above to at least spike the 200 EMA. The trend on the forward chart uh, seems to be still untouched up. So a new high seems actually, we might see a short term reaction here because there is an inefficiency and an order block here. And on the weekly, we can see it's a nice level of support and resistance. It's a weekly zone of support and resistance here. And there is another huger zone just above it. So I would expect the price to go above this. And the second zone will collide with the, will be confronted with the monthly 50 EMA. So we are in an uptrend. So maybe just remove this one. Let's continue for a buy here because that's what it might do. And aim for the next zone, safer this way. And then here for a buy, there is an inefficiency right there and a multiple level of support and resistance on the daily. So this zone makes sense for a buy as well. If it would take out this liquidity, then I would expect still to buy up to this zone minimum and to the next zone for higher probability for a sell. Euro CHF. So Euro CHF, we are still in a downtrend. Price rejected the top of the uptrend, of the downtrend right here, the last high. And now it's around the bottom. The bottom had huge rejection from this zone. That's why we had eventually an opportunity. We made money last week. And now it took out the double bottom. But the daily is quite strong going down. So let's go left. And we have an inefficiency from supply and demand right here. That's the zone where the price worked. 
right there, exactly in this zone, you can see. Price hasn't reacted well so far from it. So, and it was Friday. There was a trade on Friday. I will show you the trade so you can see. So price made an downtrend from here all the way down to here during the opening of the day. So you don't want to trade there. You wait for London open. And when London open, it took out this high. So the trend changed. And your entry would have been the order block would made this low that created this impressive move going up with the liquidity created during London. And this one would have made already three reward right there at the end of the day. So for a Friday trade, you could have taken two, 2.5, three reward. That's, that's the end of your trade. But what I would expect on Monday eventually would be eventually to take out this low, stop hunt. And after that, I would still be interested to buy there. If I see a nice, strong reaction like what I had on Friday for London, it would be better if this happened only on Tuesday, but we will see. So this zone is still there. And if it breaks, then we will search for a sell. There is a little bit of inefficiency in this down move. So there is eventually a potential for a sell around the bottom of this daily candle right here. But on the left, the only efficiency there is is around here. And I will wait this low to be taken out before I want to place another level for a sell. Here we go. Euro CAD. We were in a nice daily uptrend, and it seems it will continue. Take out the high. There is a huge run number above this high. That's the high, a huge run number above it. So most likely it will target it. And this run number will be the zone where there is a, a huge resistance there. So I will place eventually a level here, but it will be against the trend. Let's check the monthly. On the monthly, it's a visible level daily. Okay, so on the daily, the line chart level is from here to here. And every time price went to this zone, there is kind of a huge rejection. You can see here, multiple rejection and this huge rejection second time, four time. So what can I say on the last move? There is eventually the body of the candle is right here. So maybe here. So this whole zone will be interesting, but I will wait eventually a one hour change of trend confirmation to take any sell there. And once this high is taken out, then I will be tempted to place a level for a buy in this zone here. But this will be for later on. Euro yen. So price touched this huge zone of resistance. We are counter trend on the weekly and on the daily. So the best would be to buy. So this zone, I'm not interested anymore. Out of the way. I will be interested eventually into this zone of resistance turning into support with the 20 MA there. So let's check on the four chart. We have an inefficiency. Perfect. See, this has been taken out. This one has been taken out. And so go on so forth, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Again, again, everything is taken out except this zone right there. So this other block below makes a lot of sense. That's the one I'm interested in, this one. Let's place the volume and price to see. And we have a huge daily zone, Valley here. That's why my level was a bit above, actually. Let's check on the weekly. Yeah, the zone on the weekly is above as well. So I will still keep my zone just above, right there. So this first zone for a buy makes a lot of sense. And here, there is another inefficiency right there. That's why this zone right here make a lot of sense as well. Euro New Zealand, a huge uptrend as well. There is an inefficiency in this zone right there. And price is significantly up now. And this one created a new high right there. So yeah, this zone looks fine. Let's check on the daily and the weekly. What do we have there? Okay, so on the weekly, we have a nice resistance approaching. It's a zone of um, supply combined with a two times resistance here with a round number in the middle. So I expect some rejection there. Then on the buy side, there is eventually this zone on the weekly, a minor zone for a buy and a major zone for a buy, a huge level of support and resistance here. 
So maybe we can find something around the minor zone of support, which is around here. I select this level specifically because of the line chart here and the spike two times here. Now let's look on the forward chart. And as it lined up on the forward chart, we have my first level right here, which line exactly with this inefficiency zone of demand. So I will select this zone of demand as a potential area for a buy for sure. And there is liquidity just above with this, you know, stop losses placed all here. So it might just trigger the stop losses and then go up again, or eventually touch the round number first during the beginning of next week, make a fake here, maybe go above and then fall down. And this would be the area where I want to buy for sure. As well, we can see that there is a lot of volume here. So this zone have some kind of a nice interest in because look at look at here, for example. We have a nice range with a nice volume spent here. And after that, price come back to it and flew away. So yeah, this makes sense. GBP USD. So we have some kind of a head and shoulder, head and shoulder here, you know, tack tack. So a lot of stop loss above that. The trend on the four hour, uh, the real significant low hasn't been taken out. So we might see price going above that, but there is a 200 EMA on the weekly cleanly touched. There is a monthly level of resistance just above this zone. So it's a bit like Euro USD. We might see this zone taken out. And in terms of inefficiency, the zone of inefficiency actually was tapped. Like everything nearly was tapped already. So there is no inefficiency here. Yeah, this candle has been tapped already. And this one has been tapped here. So uh, actually, this is a set is not a good idea. I will remove all those levels because we are against the forward trend. And even if there's another block, it's not a good idea to keep it there. So I will go for the volume at price again on the weekly. And we have the major valley actually just above. See that right there? So it would make more sense. Um, but the price will continue to go up a little bit more. And on the monthly, yeah, we are at around the monthly level, actually. Let me check that. The monthly line chart level is right here, which collide with the zone of supply right there. That, has been, that hasn't been touched. So even if the volume is not so much good there, it lines up because there is two times a line chart resistance right here, right here and right here. Exactly the same plus this spike. So yeah, this zone just before the big valley will make sense for a sell. Now on the daily side, you zoom in, there is no inefficiency. And there is a double bottom around here. So there is liquidity here. That's why the buy would make sense here, taking the liquidity and then fly up. The sell, no, doesn't really make sense. And there is eventually a double top right here. So liquidity above. So this would be good for a sell above that. GBP cut down. So this one on the daily take out this high. So it seems it will continue to go up. Let me check. Okay, so the weekly is cleanly uptrend so far. The monthly is down and the move who fake the uptrend on the weekly is here. So yeah, there is still a, a nice sell off eventually happening there with this uh, nice probability of success, multiple support transforming into resistance. There is inefficiency in the same as uh, in the zone. But so far the power seems to be very, very strong going up. And now the daily has made a nice impressive move going up as well. So with this nice impressive move going up, there is this beautiful support on the daily right here. Let's check the valley on the remit price. So there is a major valley, but it's way below it. And there is some minor valley here. Actually, the major is a bit above this one. See, there is a huge drop in volume from here all the way to here. I change the color. From here all the way to here. So actually, this zone probably makes sense. And after the next zone will be this one. 
it's a bit above the level that I place here. And we will check on the forward chart if we see some inefficiency, nice stuff for a buy. And for a sell, you can see the valley on top here. So it still makes sense. The sell make a lot of sense there. Okay. So this level, actually, I said it should be a little bit above my level. And it's interesting because above this level was an old zone of supply that now might transform into a demand zone. Additional to that, there is multiple support here and there is an inefficiency. So the inefficiency is between this spike on the forward chart and then this low, nothing came back. So in between, there is a gap. And now I'm sure if we look at the one hour chart, we'll find a zone here. There we go. You can see it cleanly. On the one hour chart, what you get is a rally, a base, and another rally here. And the inefficiency actually, there is no inefficiency here. There is below it. But either way, we wait for a confirmation. This will make a lot of sense because of the round number in the middle. So on the four chart, there is an inefficiency. On the one hour, not so much. But still, it's a good zone. So I keep this one. And additional to this zone, there is like a, a triple bottom here. So a lot of stop losses are below that. So I stick to this one for buying for sure. And then on the sell side, there is this beautiful zone as well. Might be a little bit above that actually. Well, it's a beautiful zone for a sell. There is a nice value on the weekly volume at price. So I still stick to this zone there. It's against the trend, so I know, and you know as well, it's a lower probability. The buy will be the best. And as you know, you can filter the best trade using the Forex power or the daily trend, as I explained to you in the Complete Forex course, the lesson that we did last Saturday. Okay, so this was a good one. It didn't trigger on the beginning of the week on Monday, but there was another opportunity later on during the week. So the weekly trend told us that this low taken out this high. That's why at this level in place, and it's still valid actually, we might see a still a rejection there. I will just wait on Monday to see if there is a nice rejection. On the 15 minute chart, there was a trade and it was a winning trade actually on the 15 minute chart. So I will explain to you how. So price took the liquidity from the Monday stuff. We don't see any change in trend here. Price go down, go down, go down, and then go down, and then break this high. When it breaks this high, you take the bottom, this order block. Same, I share the indicator in the group uh, for the VIP. And, um, tick -tick, and it made five rewards already. See, this happened on Friday, so I didn't took it. It made 45 pips when the stop loss was nine pips only. So this is a five reward trade, and it's a beautiful winning trade. Now we have on the forward chart an angle thing, which means if we have eventually the forward chart trend spiked up here, uh, this would be still a valid trade for a buy for a while. And if so, I would be interested to take the inefficiency, which is around here. Between this spike, there is a gap here, okay? Or so inefficiency here, which makes me believe the price will come back here. And then with another 15 minute chart confirmation, I might take the trade on Monday with a lower risk. On the daily, there was an impressive move right here with another block and another level of support here. So let me check if there is a level for a sell. And also on the daily, there was this high spiked a little bit here, there, which means this bottom became the reference point of the daily trend and the daily trend was broken down. So there is still the possibility of a nice sell. But on the daily, it's pretty messy volume at price. So there is nothing very obvious. And you want obvious valet to make sure you get the highest probability of success in the trade. So we go to the weekly now. There is a valet right here. So this is the most powerful level for sure. And in the middle, there is a valet around here. This is the only one that makes sense, actually. Let's check on the daily. On the daily, it doesn't really make sense to 
to sell there. It's pretty close from the price right now. The only really strong valley is above and it has been touched already. And there is eventually another valley right there. This will be for a short term trader, maybe two to three well, not so much more than that. So I will check on the order block to see if it's untouched and what can we do there. Because this one is not too bad actually. So here's why. So we have another block here. This has been taken out. Then above that, there is uh, no fair value gap. This is mitigated already here, okay? But above that, between this high and this low, there is a, a gap here. So this zone, and there is additional round number as well here. On the daily, there might be an EMA. There is 50 EMA just below that. So all combined together would make me believe that this other block might have some chance of success. This would, yeah, it's, it makes sense for me for a nice sell, a nice, I would say a short term sell because the impulsive move going up was, was pretty strong. This move from here to here was, was pretty huge and strong. So it means for me that the big banks, they have invested for a buy there and they were able to, to break the downtrend. So it would still make sense for a buy there. So caution. GBP, yen. So we are in a weekly uptrend, that's for sure. And then price now is really in a double confirmation weekly uptrend. We are around this high, we had an impressive going down, but it has been rejected multiple times already. So I'm not too sure I want to sell again there. The sell was a success last week but they didn't take the liquidity here. So I would expect the liquidity to be taken out with this fair value gap here. So let's check the volume at price to see where we can buy more than selling. Okay, so we have a weekly beautiful valley right there. And then we have another valley right here. So those two level qualify. This one has been mitigated already. So maybe the second one will be a better opportunity. Now we are on the forward chart and we check where has been the mitigation of this. There is a lot of stop losses here and a lot of volume in this channel. So now it broke a little bit out of the channel. I would really expect the price to go all the way to this 200 EMA minimum. And then before that, there is some double bottom right here. So the second zone right here makes a lot of sense for buy as well. And it's another block on the forward chart right there. So yeah, two goods on here for a buy and the price seems to be weaker to go up. So a retracement um, seems to, to be logical to happen this week and touch our level for a nice buy there. GBP, New Zealand. So making, continuing to make highs. We have an unmitigated zone where it is right now. The rest is mitigated. So it's not really encouraging. On the weekly, we are near this high that rejected very violently. And above that, there is a supply zone right there. So this supply zone might work because there is liquidity just above that, but it's safer to go for a buy. And then for the buy, we have a nice level of resistance right here that might transform into a support. And that's the beginning of last week. So it would make sense for the price to retest this bottom right here. Let's use the volume at price and see what we have there. There is a huge round number in this zone as well for a buy. And there is a huge drop in volume just below it. So it would make sense for sure. Let's check the forward chart to, to see if just below those two lines, there is some nice inefficiency and Interesting story here. We get a lot of bottoms here, which means a lot of stop losses are in this zone below it. Then price take out this uh, zone. And after that, there is an inefficiency here. So basically our level for a buy would, would be here, right there, because this one is full of liquidity. So we might have a little rejection happening before this zone right there. And I'm talking about the minor rejection here. I would expect the major rejection to happen there. Why there? 
because there is a beautiful drop base, strong rally, and between this spike and those low, and this is a huge pool of liquidity, there is a lot of money there, a lot of stop losses here. There is this inefficiency until here. So this order block right here, taking the liquidity of this candle, this one is a huge probability in terms of supply and demand. So I put this zone for sure. Now I will check on the daily what's, what would happen. On the daily, what is interesting to note as well is we have the bottom of the upward move right here. We have eventually the demand zone who created the new high breaking this one. So this zone, first zone makes sense for sure for buy. And if it would break, there is a second zone, which is the bottom of the uptrend on the daily. See, one huge candle going down, that's a retracement on the daily, a significant retracement. So that's the two opportunity for a buy. We are still in an uptrend, so this is safer to buy. And after that, here, there is the zone of supply from the weekly counter trend. So be cautious on this. I wanted to see the volume at price on the daily to see what's happened there. Uh, very interesting there. Uh, very interesting why, because there is a, a spike in volume, a nice one here. So the spike in volume are less efficient than the valley, but below the spike, there is a huge valley. So when there is a huge spike and a huge valley after that, this confirms that this zone makes a lot of sense for a buy. And there is another valley, a strong valley as well on the second level right here. So the daily uh, support and resistance from the volume at price is confirming those two nice levels. Euro GBP. So the weekly is was up and it spiked down. So might be down right now. We have a daily impressive move going down. That's why I have this level right here for a sell and this one for a sell as well. What is interesting is we have a double top just before the zone. That's very nice which means if price spiked up, uh, there is good probability for the price to go down, okay? And if it would do that, then there is a head and shoulder right here as well. Since the weekly change eventually by spiking this low, we might see the price going all the way here. And here is an inefficiency between this high and this zone. So this zone right there is a huge zone for a buy still because the monthly is an uptrend. See, right here, you have like a triple top right there. So a lot of liquidity above that. And if it would go up, then there is a nice chance for a sell. Nothing changed here. New Zealand USD. So didn't trigger my level for a sell. So trend is still down, but there's pin bar rejecting this zone and continue to fall. So I would expect the downtrend to continue down. There is a huge zone of support from the weekly right here and an inefficiency just below it. Check on the weekly. On the weekly, what do we get? This has been spiked. Yeah, my two levels are in the zone of inefficiency. Yeah, nothing changed here. I cannot put any level. There is no impulse strong move in one direction. So we keep the level where they were last week. A beautiful winning trade on New Zealand CAD on Tuesday. So this level uh, has, win, has won actually two times. I will go with you with the trade. So there is one trade right here and then there is another trade right here. So this was the beginning of the week. So we wait for London to make something. The high was here. And then it took out this low, making a new low again, and then taking out this high during the end of the day, which means the entry candle, but this is a spike due to the broker. So you wouldn't have entered a trade at the end of the day. Let's be honest together. You just wait for this end of the day, beginning of the new day to pass. And after that, one hour later, one hour and a half later, you place your trade. So your trade would have been placed to the candle who made the low, which is this one. And on certain brokers, there is this candle doesn't exist as well. And you place your entry right here, it triggers. We are spread. at the end of this the swing trading trade. weekly and like this. this I wish you success with those levels. In two to three days. Have a nice week. See you then next Monday. Back to this Bye, everyone. And same happen. You have this downtrend making new low, making new low, and then this high taken out. Your entry was the bottom of this candle right here. Exactly touch it. There was eventually two trade there.
two trades during the same week, one on Wednesday, on Thursday, sorry, and one on uh, Monday. Monday was a bit risky, but Thursday for reversal made sense. And there was an interesting trade that I can show you as well for a sell. This one was full of nice setup. That's where we took our profit. So we entered the trade around here and my take profit was right here. And you can see it just spiked it and then flew down. Why did I want to take my profit here? Because this is the candle that created this new low and there is a big inefficiency between here and here. So this was a perfect take, take profit for me. And on the one hour chart, we can see there was this zone of supply. Actually, this spike, sorry, right here. This was a zone of supply. Price made like one level of rise, one range. Second level of rise, second range. Third level of rise, and then fall. You know, the rule of three from Steve Morrow, market maker, works perfectly. So this one is done anyway. Just wanted to show you how it worked for this last week. Now let's look on the daily. So the weekly is gone. This level is gone. So I will not take it again. And I will not take it because the price was not able to make a, a new high. And the daily is quite still strong going down. So there is still a zone in the middle of this daily with this multiple support here transforming into resistance. We will check. So there is still a huge valley here. That's the biggest valley you can find on the volume at price. So there is still a chance that the price will fly up from this zone. Still, it's possible. <laughs> but we are interested to sell and the, because there is multiple valley, but not very significant. But the high volume, there is only one point here. So. I will remove the indicator and we will check if this level makes sense on the forward chart. Okay, and it does, and I will explain why. So this level actually, I will expand it from here to here, which is around the 200 and the 800 EMA, which is nice confirmation of this. And between this spike and this spike, there is a gap. So there is a gap zone here. And this zone has been taken out already, which means there is already stop losses above this high, above this high. So it would make complete sense, complete sense for the price to go up more, take the liquidity above it, the so stop loss is here, fill the gap here and touch this high, basically, because it's also the candlestick who made the high, as you can see right here. And eventually go to the 200 EMA, it's totally possible, and give us a nice opportunity for a sell. And when we sell there, then we will expect the price to go all the way, taking this double bottom right here, and eventually go in this zone or making a new low. Either way, if you take the target profit as this too low or below that, it, will, it might be a beautiful trade with, let's say, 7, 8 reward on it. So this one looks good for a sell. Keep it there. New Zealand CHF. So this one broke this flow on the weekly. See, the weekly trend was still down and didn't fly, took out this low. There is a huge round number sitting there as well. So this might be a fake, just taking the liquidity. On the monthly, there is a spike below that. We are around the spike, but it has been taken out. So. I will remove this zone. It's not interesting anymore. What you want is the all time low, which is right here. Now let's look at the daily. We'll check for a level of resistance. Well, we have a zone of supply right here. Okay. So the daily candlestick took this high before falling very strongly down. This is also a level of support here. So support turning to resistance, making this one departure from the zone very strong. Uh, good chances for a sell here. And this nearly no inefficiency, but here, yeah, I will still keep it there. There is 50 MA here. This might be a good chance for a sell for sure. New Zealand, Yen. Broke this low. 
there is an untapped zone right here and there is a double bottom so liquidity below that what's happened on the daily so daily is still in a downtrend but there was a huge departure from the zone right here and there is a huge rejection as a support on the daily here also this is the top of the candle made the low so i might keep this one on the weekly, we're still in an uptrend actually on the weekly with a huge bullish angle thing here. Let's see if there is a zone in the middle there. But there is a huge value where the price is at right now. So yeah, it would make sense still. Yeah. So I would I would keep this zone. The daily is not super clean, but still. Yeah, I would keep this zone for a buy because it's unmitigated order flow, order block, sorry. And that's the top of the daily candle who made the low. And there is a double bottom here as well. Because all the rest is mitigated already. USD CAD, uh, this one gave us some losing trade last week. So daily trend was nice going down, but it didn't work. And now it's tap out the daily up. So what I would like to do now is, it was following actually the weekly uptrend from here to here. So this works. The, the weekly might be up now. And there is another block right there. Which make me think, I will check for an opportunity to buy it. There. So we have a nice valet right here. That's the biggest value you can find there. And it's quite far away from the place, so it would be a nice retracement. So I would expect this value to work. So what makes me want to buy here is like the other block from the weekly work, and the weekly is still in an uptrend. Nothing, the, the last bottom hasn't been spiked out. So which means the weekly trend is really going to continue. And this level right here is very nice because there is an inefficiency just above. Price didn't came back in this zone. So this one is for me a nice opportunity for a buy for sure, right there. And the sell makes sense here because there's an inefficiency here as well. USD CHF. So this one rejected the level of last week. It was like a support turning into resistance from here to here, it was a beautiful winning trade. Below that, we have a strong level of support on the weekly, and there is a double bottom here. So I would expect still this bottom to work, even if it's against the trend, because there is liquidity just before it. And here, there is like a double top forming at the round number, and the zone of supply is just above, and it's untouched, untapped, nothing. So if price will come back to this area, I would really expect the price to continue to fall. And the daily trend is pretty beautiful, impressive going down. This will be the line chart level of support here and the 20 MA on the daily as well. So a set opportunity here uh, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and we have also the possibility of the price reverse this zone, which is an untapped order block with a fair value gap just above it. So price might fill the gap, go all the way up here and then from there, continue to drop down. But this one is a bit lower probability. Since the forward chart trend is pretty clean going down, I would not buy there yet. I would buy once the liquidity of the button is taken. USD Yen, so rejected the zone from last week. It was a beautiful winning trade. Now price is retracing, so we are out of it. In this specific move, I would still expect the price to reject this zone because it's like a drop base rally and a strong rally with a lot of inefficiency in the middle right there. So I would expect the price to, to come and fill this gap before rejecting up, maybe from here as well, actually. We have some liquidity, like a double bottom. So liquidity has been taken out and price is reversing already. So I will not take the sell again because it's not a very strong level and there is liquidity above it. So to explain, there is a double top here. So stop loss is above. And here, now there is stop loss is above as well. 
So there is an inefficiency in this zone. I would expect the price to feel this inefficiency and eventually to the next level, I would want to sell. And if this level doesn't work, I will want to sell around this because this is the impressive going down on this weekly downtrend. So this one, I'm out of it. I don't want it anymore. The next one will be here. And on the forward chart, we will check. So the next level, there is an inefficiency between here and here. And the first order block is a one hour one right here. And then there is a second order block right here. This one actually would make more sense for the real uh, huge move going down. And on the weekly, I will show you the volume at price. So on the volume at price, there is not a lot of history because it's a brand new zone, but there is a zone right here, okay? And this zone has been touched already. It might go a little bit above. There is a spike in volume on the weekly right there and a drop just after that, a huge drop. So actually the zone between those two levels is a huge zone for a sell. Okay, now for a buy, I forget about this one. So on the daily chart, we have a nice impulsive move here, creating a new high. Well, this still looks like a retracement, but still it's a nice zone. So let's check for the volume at price for a buy eventually there. So there is a level visible on the daily right here. We know the daily is a bit lower probability, so let's check on the weekly. As this zone appears pretty, pretty nicely on the weekly. You can see right here, there is a huge drop in volume on the weekly. So this is a good level. Now we'll check on the four chart. So on the four chart and the one hour to see the inefficiencies, we have our level right here actually. This was the last candle before the huge move up and the gap here. So this is a good level for buying right there. All the way here. So beautiful zone. USD Mexican peso. So this one, we are on the one hour chart on the four, it touched this zone of demand right here and then rejected without giving us any opportunity to enter. Then price retrace, one drop, retrace, second drop, retrace. And now it might be the third drop, but I'm not too sure. I would still expect the price to touch my zone right here. And there would still eventually be an opportunity for a buy from there. But if it happened on Monday, it's not a very good probability of success. So I would still wait for Tuesday and uh, 15 minutes confirmation once price is in this zone right there to tap it a little bit more just with the spike from the beginning of the day, which is very dangerous. USD czar. So this one on the forward eventually took this high, make a nice impressive move going up. But on the other hand, it still go down. So what do we get on the chart? We get the double bottom, actually triple bottom right here. And we have this zone untapped, zone of supply, demand, sorry. So I have a zone right there and that's where I would be interested to buy. So I want to buy because on the weekly, I cannot put the volume at price here. So, you know, because it takes too much memory. I was expecting this to reject down. That's what it did. Uh, we have an impressive angle thing going up here. The trend is a bullish trend, a pretty strong one here. So we have a bit of liquidity here. We might eventually reject from here, or we might go take the liquidity and reject from this previous resistance support in the past as well, a huge spike and taking the liquidity below this there. So go down, take the liquidity and then fly up. So retracement might not be over on the daily chart. So two opportunity, buy both of them for a buy, not really a set opportunity there. UK, we had a losing trade here because it touched a daily, very beautiful zone of supply right there, but it broke it. So this one is gone, but it's gone. It's not really gone because the top of the daily candle hasn't been taken out. So the zone actually is from here all the way to here, and this high hasn't been taken out. 
So I will see next week what I will do. I might still take a sell here, eventually on Tuesday and during London, not during Asia because we are talking about UK 100. So this will be with a reasonable spread during it. Now, what happened last week, we have like one double, we have a triple top and it took the liquidity of this triple top and made like a railroad track here. So we might eventually have a move a little bit up like that and then a real fall after that. So it might be worth it to still take a sell here. But for this, you will wait for the 15 minute chart to break the trend. My level, I can put it above here. So what I will wait is this high to be taken up and then eventually a change in trend. And then I will enter for a sell there. And this sell uh, might have a huge risk to reward ratio because look at how much pips the price made from this zone all the way there. So even if it does only half of it, which is to this zone of um, demand here, uh, this is still maybe 10 to 12 reward just by itself. So it's interesting to, to still keep this zone in mind because it might give us a nice trade uh, beginning of next week. Here we go. And for a buy, mm -hmm. well, the monthly is up. Obviously, there is a huge level of support and resistance right here that I didn't notice much. And there is a zone of supply and demand here. So is there untapped zone? Yes, there is. So there is a beautiful zone here for a buy from here to here. So you can see, even if you take this amount, which is 200, uh, no, 28 pips stop loss, you have a potential of 230 pips on this specific trade. Yes, because everything, the inefficiency is from here to here. So price will eventually feel this inefficiency, which gives you 200 pips basically, which is around eight to 10 times your risk, eventually way more than that if you enter with a 15 minute candle. So here we go, a beautiful trade coming on next week eventually. US 30, nothing changed. I want to buy there, nothing changed. I will not go over it. S&P, same price, just range. Doesn't move. GPY two to five, same. So we have a, a range inefficiency here. So I will eventually place this zone. And this zone is a huge zone of resistance, you know, multiple time here. Yeah. Resistance, resistance, and then support right here. A huge zone of support here, line chart and spikes. So yeah, this zone makes sense. So this, there is an inefficient fair value gap just above it. There is a lot of stop losses, you know, here and here. So a lot of money before that, so price might likely fall, take this, and then from here, I will be ready to buy. Yeah, beautiful trade here eventually as well. Because it might create a new high after that, see? There is a double top here. So when it rejects here, your target can be here, and it's very likely it will hit it. That's it. We are done for this week. Um, so I hope you took advantage of last week. It made pretty, pretty nice profits. Like every week, if you just follow the rules, you wait for London to open and you follow with a 15 minute change of character to take the trade. And um, if you want to learn more on this topic, I have a complete mentorship with one year course. And I do live session every Saturday as well. So that's it. I wish you success for this week. Have a nice trading, make money, and we see each other next week. Bye, everyone.